This is The Sim Pit. I'm your host, Sean Cole, and welcome to this week's edition of The Pit Stop, where we are here to talk about sim racing and all the great things going on. You know, we have so many com companies to keep the pulse, our pulse, the keep checking the pulse of to find out what cool information, updates, uh, DLC, things like that. We have hardware companies constantly making updates, so that's the whole point of The Pit Stop, is to find out what's going on each week in sim racing and make sure that you guys know all about it without having to do too, too much research. So, uh, it is a new year, and if you weren't here last week, I would like to wish you all a very happy new year. And I also want to let you know, you know, this show, uh, towards the end of the year, we cut the BS on The Pit Stop. We got rid of a lot of the riffraff, the extra chit-chat. We went to a pre-recorded show that we could sit here and talk about in order to expedite the topics. Uh, another thing that we did do uh, starting at this year, beginning of this year, was we moved all of the Sim Pit community racing to its very own show called the Pit Pass. I'll talk about that at the end of the show, but it is another level of cutting the BS from the show. This show is really here to be about news, tell you what's going on, and then move along for the rest of the day so you can get out there and do some sim racing. So what is going on in sim racing? So many things to talk about. It's actually, I kind of lied to you there. It's been a little slow rollout for 2021 so far not to be uh not a big surprise i think a lot of people took their vacations uh very seriously this year some much needed time away from the madness and uh but we do have things going on most of it racing so starting off with iRacing looking at the Porsche Tag Heuer esports super cup feature Ellis scored the first win at Interlagos I'm looking at this picture by the way i know this has nothing to do with the win other than showing you um the the car of the winners, Kevin Ellis, well, Kevin Ellis, the winner, uh, in the Ray Hall Letterman Lanigan eSport team in that beautiful number 30 red and black car. Um, what a great looking shot. I gotta, you know, sim racing has come so far, people. <laughs> it has come so far. Anyway, some great shots of the racing. And I tell you, look at this shot as well. We, you know, it's hard to tell real life from sim nowadays. It really is. Uh, anyway, congratulations to Kevin Ellis on the win. Maximilian Beneke, uh finishing in second. And Mitchell DeJong. Uh-oh, look out, world. If Mitchell DeJong is back to taking road racing seriously, there are going to be some people moved down the ladder. Martin Kroenke in fifth. Uh, huge names in this series. This is the best of the best in the road racing world. So congratulations to him. Uh, Scott Andrews, there is that iRacing Pro Series pre in preseason invitational with some really big names from the world of motorsport and scott andrews went on to win the race uh robbie foley finishing in second daniel morad finishing in third um so that went on uh fairly recently when was that 23 drivers took the grid um 38 lap race and anyway, this is all kind of a build up to the 24. How many of you are going to run in the 24 hours of Daytona coming up very soon? Very, very soon. I need to really get to work. Uh, not a lot of time to prepare for one of the biggest races of the sim racing, entire sim racing world, honestly. Uh, the iRacing Daytona 24. I think that might be, I, I'm not, I'm going to use the word think just to protect myself. That is the biggest online race of the year period i i can't think of anything that has more applicants more entries more drivers more streams uh more splits more trophies more winners than the i racing daytona 24 coming up very soon the sim pit will be fielding oh one two three cars not sure we're still counting our drivers we're still getting up to speed but we are definitely going to be there for that one um Looking at the Outlaw Law Sprint Car World, uh, Cardwell reclaims momentum. Uh, it had been Bergeron, who had kind of like, at the beginning of the season, Bergeron got kind of a slow start for him. And then the most unbeatable man in iRacing Dirt, Alex Bergeron, went on a terror. And now Cardwell has reclaimed some momentum with a win at the latest race. That's Hayden Cardwell at Kokomo, by the way. Uh, he finished first, James Eden second, Tyler Shell in third, Bergeron back in fourth place only taking in 69 points what does it do to the championship we already we talked about it even last week and each week but it's really a fight between bergeron and cardwell for the championship kendall tucker's kendall tucker is in third but he's already like 30 points back so it really is i'm 130 points back i'm sorry uh bergeron 583 cardwell 581 
Uh, let's see, how many races are left in this series? Uh, da, 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 da. Through eight rounds. So, I can't remember. What's their total schedule? They don't give us a total count on how many races they're running. After eight, we are two points in that championship, which is awesome. Stuart Haas, uh, you know, I, I, I had the iRacing Twitter page up, and it literally showed just a ton of signings. All the teams re-signing their drivers for this year's schedule. Uh, this was posted at iRacing. I would imagine we're going to see more of these at their news channel. If you want to get the latest on, I saw, you know, like Ray Alfala. Anyway, all the driver signings are happening right now, and all the teams are making those announcements. So, Stuart Haas Esport. They announced their drivers 2021 E-NASCAR Coca-Cola iRacing Series of Graham Bolin and Dylan Duvall. Um, I thought I had one more post about the Challenger Series underway. No, no, I think that's something else. All right, moving right along. Uh, big, if you're an R-Factor person, this has been huge. If you're a sim racer waiting on R-Factor to make some steps to kind of step up their game... I think this is one of them. Uh, the competition system, which was introduced recently to R-Factor 2 and is going so, through some refinements, uh, is a big deal. And it's going to be a game changer for R-Factor. It's going to really take, you know, I I don't know if you ever want to call, when you think of sim racing, do you think of the big one, the big two, the big three, the big four? When you think of how many main players there are in sim racing, you know, we account for multiples. R Factor 2 for me is definitely one of the big players, but they have been a little late on the game. And this is a big deal, the competition system. So this week's blog, which came out on the 13th, so two days ago, uh, talks about the blog. They have a little Q&A even. So what will be the major feature of the system which will make people say, hey, let's play or switch to R Factor 2? That's the question from Stevi. I'm not sure who Stevi is. Um, and then the answer, yeah, I'm not going to read through all this. It's there. I have the link to every topic we're talking about right there in the description here at YouTube. So if you want to follow any of these stories or read all of the Q&A, it is here. Uh, their answer was they're not sure they can name a single major feature that would do the trick. But significant part of the community has been us telling you if only you had organized online system like one of your major competitors. Wonder who they could be talking about when... People bring that up. Anyway, that is what's going on. This is our factor building a competition system that, I, you know, I'm not going to name names. Let's just say, you know, one of the major players, one of the bigs, that that's kind of been the backbone or, or basis of their success uh, to an extent. And so now our, our factor is directly addressing that desire from the community. Uh, it's not just a nice feature. This is something the community has wanted across the board all sims uh this is when you look at some of the third party companies that do race management you know that's some of the stuff that they try to incorporate in the sims that don't have that feature built in just to add accountability uh it's a scoring system too you know uh who is the best of the best on paper in points mathematically speaking uh also Looking at the R Factor Twitter page, they have a cool picture. I love these pictures. Uh, whether you're talking real life or sim racing, I love those pictures that let you see the whole grid, the whole field, all the great paint jobs of our heroes. So R Factor here. Check out who will be driving which car in the race for the Hussingveld Peregrine 2021 title. And we got this cool shot of a fleet of Audis, it looks like. Yes. Indeed, a fleet of Audis. So there you go. There is the lineup of cars. And what else? Final day for Formula E qual. Hussingveld, we talked about that. Blog posts, we talked about that. Um, the RCCOX0 2021 version 1.11 now available. Fix the custom window banners not showing. Added windshield template adds to the ability to skin the inside of the window banner. Um, blah, blah, blah. So a little update to that new car from them. And I think that is... We already talked about competition system. This just in. Virtual Dutch. Uh, tune in live to see who takes the crown. And share of the $13,500 Euro prize pool. This is on Sunday. 
And this is the Sim Formula Europe presented in our factor. Inner Classics 2021 Virtual Dutch GP at Zandvoort. So we got that coming up this weekend. All right, Cody's blog, Cody's Racing Line. Look at this funny Audi dune buggy bubble beast thing. Uh, anybody driven that? I have not. I have not driven that. Anyway, Cody's, they have their little blog link in the description. You can check it out. Some information. We talked about last week the update to Dirt 5 with new cars, new tracks, new career events, all that stuff. Stuff for the public or everybody. Stuff for the, 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 the pass owners and whatnot. Uh, Formula One, we talk separately about all of that kind of stuff. So it's a little recap of everything going on in the Codemasters uh, world. Um, we like to break it down. So Codemasters F1 2020, um, or F1 Esports Series 2020 breaks viewing records and virtual Grand Prix return to kickstart 2021. So we are getting ready for all the next gen. It is almost, you know, it's a new season upon us in real life and it also is a new season upon us in the big big uh leagues of sim racing as well uh additionally the series recorded 23 million almost 24 million video views up 29 percent from 2019 giving you an idea of the growth so uh the viewership for the f1 esports series was up 29 percent over the previous year um we're gonna it'll be interesting we we did cover this a little bit on three wide and the impact of 2020 on sim racing um we're gonna have to see how this like are we going to maintain are we going to have a no growth year are we still gonna grow again are we gonna have a no growth or are we gonna see a decrease because of how much of that growth might have been somewhat artificial it'll be really interesting to see what 2021 has in store. I think we as sim racers, we're all in good shape. The answer to that question might not affect our daily sim racing all that much, but it will be uh, uh, interesting. Uh, anyway, all this kicks off January 31st. Like I said, new season's upon us. Uh, Dirt. So Dirt on the 11th posted this. We want to make the best game we can for people who care about the game. Dirt 5 development director... K8RPY explains how feedback from our community plays a pivotal role in Dirt 5's progress. So we just talked about, you know, last week and then just now in the Cody's blog, we talked about the Dirt update and changes and things that they added. And listening to what they're talking about in this 20-minute video, you would assume that most of what was added in that update was what the community had marked the loudest for. <laughs> Is that fair wording? Um, I had one more Cody's Dirt story. Where is it? Where is it? Boom! Here it is. Dirt. So IGN has awarded Dirt 5 Best Racing Game of 2020. Gamescom 2020 also given Dirt 5 the Best Racing Game Award. Open Critic has given Dirt 5 an 89% recommendation. And that is is before we get to more content through 2021. So congratulations, Dirt 5. You did rack up some big awards there. Well done there. Formula 1, they are kicking off their Challenger series to get into the big leagues. So this was posted on the 11th. The F1 Esport Challengers is the road to the big leagues. I just said that. And just before Christmas, the first event got underway. Miss any of it or just want to watch it all again? Check out our event one report here. So there's a link here. I haven't looked at that link yet. We'll click it real quick to see what they have. So um, F1 Challenger Series. So you can see how uh, this is working your way, trying to earn your way into the big league, which at this point is the highest paying and the most professional form of pro esport that I can think of. So this is the one to go for. Let me have a swig of coffee real quick. As we move on to NASCAR Heat. There we go. Here's a little video there. Winter Heat Series. So this is what's in store for the Winter Heat Series drivers, little promo video. <coughs> Excuse me. Sorry about that. Um, and how much money was on? I think I read, was it 13.5 on this one? I think, I don't know. Can I find 
what I'm looking for. With $2,000 going to each of the winners, this is going to be the biggest payout of the Winter Heat Series so far. Um, it is also the final opportunity to qualify for the finale next month. So, Winter Heat, NASCAR Heat, Winter Heat Series going on right now. Going strong, finishing up, actually. Uh, quite a while ago, we showed off the Mazda RX Vision GT3 concept car in Gran Turismo. Uh, there are ways that uh, players can unlock it. And they had done a survey when they released the game, uh, the, the mod, the car, the concept car. Uh, and they were asking for your help, uh, questions they wanted answers to, to do some, gain some information, I'm assuming, for the development of fur further cars, future cars, this car, Gran Turismo even. Anyway, uh, the concept, there was a reward. So anyway, here is how to claim your reward. So if you did fill out their survey and 300,000, um, or everybody who participated got 300,000 in-game credits. Uh, they were from 70 country, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, how to claim your reward. Log in Gran Turismo Sport using the same account for PlayStation Network used to complete the survey and notification will, about your reward will appear on the top screen and in-game credits will automatically be added to your credit. The reward can be claimed until today. Today is last day. So there you go. You better do it if you're going to do it. What else? What else? Ritza, Ritza, Ritza. Uh, there was an update to the update to the update. AMS2 has been updated to 1.1.04. This is a complimentary update to the last release featuring improvements and corrections for SPA, tire and driveline physics, along with new AI logic for multi-class races. Full change log here. You can check that out yourself. Just follow that link. And that's pretty much it from them uh, right now. Yep, that takes us back to things we've already covered, but good for them for continued support. Race Room, uh, they are back with a one gigabyte update. You know, I, you got to give Race Room credit. I give credit where credit is due when companies are making the needed updates, uh, continuing to update, continuing to support their sim at the highest levels. And, I, you know, I give companies like Euro Truck or ATS top honors, perhaps. But Race Room is right there with the best. Uh, they are constantly making massive updates DLC, some of it free, some of it paid, constantly making things better in Race Room. Uh, anyway, this is a one gigabyte update that you can now get to make your Race Room even better. They have all their community racing, which we don't talk about. Um, I mean, it's not that we don't. It's just, you know, community racing. I let you know when there are events you can join, like this one here. Some serious racing action is coming your way, featuring the best racers from around Asia. 15,000 U.S. on the line. Tune in the champion, and that'll be... That was yesterday. We should have results. Community racing, 10,000 members on Discord. Congratulations to them on that. And multi-class races and things like that. Here's their changelog for everything. So if you want to read the full update, it's there on Steam as well. Uh, this was sent in by E. Cruz, who's a viewer talking about a different type of race room community event. Like I said, I always want to tell you what you guys can do. Uh, this event here is the shakedown event for the Porsche Carrera Cup multi-community season 2021. The big event will start January 28th through June 3rd. 10 races every other Thursday, and we're talking about tracks like, uh, what are they doing? They're doing Daytona, Suzuka, Imola, Silverstone, Road America, Laguna Seca, Spa, Nürburgring, Shanghai, and Monza. Um, this is open to anybody. And there is a form. I'm going to have a link in the description of the show that you can go to it. But uh, this is the Shakedown event, the Porsche Carrera Cup. Welcome to the big Shakedown event for the Porsche Carrera Cup multi-community season 2021. Big event. I already gave you the date, 10 races. We talked about the places. Their main goal is to choose between four to seven drivers based on your performance and how clean you can drive. And this is picking people for the official Porsche Carrera Cup. So that's something you can check out. I have a link here to the sign up page and I'll put a link to these. Does that get you to these? I'm not sure if that gets you to those images. I'll put a link to those images in the description as well. Just make sure I do that. Wreckfest, Winterfest. Can you believe they kill, keep 
making new stuff for Wreckfest. New tournament, Winterfest. New free reward car, the Star Beast SS. Bugs, fixes, bug fixes and improvements. This should be entertaining. Wreck <laughs> fest on ice. Yeah, baby. <laughs> So a little holiday update uh, for your <laughs> wreck fest. <laughs> yeah! Yeah, look at this snowballs wreaking havoc. Awesome, awesome stuff. All right, uh, Rick Motek, I pulled this up to remind you uh, this coming Wednesday will be the Rick Motek Hot Lap Hump Day. So I just, uh, since we've changed the, the timing of the shows and when that happens, I feel like we don't get to give you advanced warning. You know, back when we were doing uh, three shows a week, I could tell you on Wednesday morning, hey, it's tonight. Um, but the next Rick Motek, Rick Motek Hot Lap Hump Day is this coming Wednesday. No idea what the car combo. Anyway, check out this. This is dual RS1 concept design, side by side uh, for some PlayStation split screen gaming. That's a pretty cool setup. You know, uh, I can't remember the movie it was. Was it Cable Guy? I don't know. I think there have been a few references to uh, a television or the cable being the uh, the babysitter, right? <laughs> I call this the babysitter. Uh, anyway, Hot Lap Pump Day coming up this Wednesday. Sim Cube posted this a day ago. Sim Racing Bay has been a reseller for SimuCube. We are announcing that our longtime official reseller, Sim Racing Bay, is no longer our official SimuCube 2 direct drive reseller. And there is good reason for that. We've reached a milestone where SimuCube business has grown to a point where Sim Racing Bay can focus on building accessories for the SimuCube ecosystem. They will stay as an essential partner for Granite Devices now and in the future. Anyway, it looks like uh, SimiCube is moving in-house with direct sales instead of using that distributor, but opening the door for more, perhaps, from Sim Racing Bay in the future. So, good stuff. Eurotruck posting some pictures of Iberia Madrid. So, some screenshots of the latest works from them. Oh, whoops, whoops. Um, why does it do that? That's really weird. Here, we'll look at the bigger shots. So, new scenery, new terrain, new maps, new regions, continually getting better. American Truck Simulator does, they don't want to be undone, uh, overdone, undone, outdone, outdone. Uh, update 1.4, New Mexico and Oregon viewpoints. Back in October last year, update 1.39 for American Truck Simulator saw the arrival of viewpoints to the states of Washington and Utah. After the popular debut in Idaho, after the popular debut in Idaho, today we are happy to share with you that our next 1.4 update will see the introduction of more viewpoints in the states of New Mexico and Oregon. So that's good to see. I think these are really important. I've been doing a fair amount of flight simulator and having iconic geographic features in regions that you know intimately is pretty important. It, you know, like if, you, if you're from LA, you know the layout of the mountains, you know, you know where certain buildings are. And you'll not only use that to navigate, but you'll also use that to reconfirm just how wonderful the sim you are playing or driving or flying is so anyway this is great to see and again more from ats and ets constantly constantly updating uh here is an article amir sent this in article at racinggames.gg i'm gonna have the link there if you want to check it out racing games need to support new players when it comes to setups setups are some of the most infuriating components of racing games but they shouldn't be uh it's an opinion article on what they should be doing differently when it comes to this. You know, 
This is a topic that came up in our Discord channel just the other day. Setups. Um, it is, if you're a series admin, this is one of the conversations you have with your internally or with your internal team. Open setups, fixed setups. Where do we get the setups? Should you pay for setups? Should the setups be provided by the game? Uh, these are daily questions in sim racing, and I don't have the answers. I have some opinions, and I think there's a place, a time and place for everything. In general, I can tell you I've been disappointed by the setups provided and the dependence on paid setups or friends, engineers with good setups or alien racers with good setups, and that you could see such a huge difference between provided setups and a tuned setup that it forces every racer on the open world, at least, to become an engineer. And, and we could argue whether you should or shouldn't become an engineer and know everything about setup. That's a whole topic of another discussion that we've had many a time on the show and we will have many more times on the show. So that does it with all the stories. There are a few things on Reddit just to look at. And then I'll just tell you what's going on with the Sim Pit. And that's about it. We're going to bring this one to a close. This was posted by Eastern Wind. Finally, after one and a half years of driving like a bus driver... He finally built this, and he must say, I wish he had, he wishes he had done it sooner. Now it just needs a bit of paint. Yep, well, you know what? If you're out there on a desktop, I tell you all the time, you can race in a desktop, you can win championships on a desktop. But having a rig is of any level is so much nicer. It is so much nicer to have your equipment where it belongs instead of where it can be used. So that's why I post even some of the most basic death mobiles uh, to motivate you. Maybe you're still on a desk, but there's got to be a way. I call it the side pod where you build a rig right next to your desk so that you can leave the monitor at the desk essentially or just move it or turn it for the rig and still have a desk if you need it for work, school, or life, whatever. Anyway, uh, LED lighting. Do you guys do this? I, I'm doing i'm about to do a, a a little bit of an update to the studio look and i'm probably gonna bring in some lighting but i have not decided i do have a light up i have that light up keyboard um i could you know but uh led lighting i just thought this kind of made it's something i'm doing right now behind the scenes and so i just wondered how many of you have led lighting in your race room is that a is that a must-have simple rig Maybe now he can stop sending it in the wall. New G29 on a GT Omega art setup. Just giving you some of the basics today, you guys. This one posted by Crocus Legend. He's building a full DIY BRZ-inspired race rig. That's the Subaru BRZ, the, the little small fun car. Still working out electronic stuff, but today he took a full... With six speed, with clutch, with force feedback through his gaming PC. Excuse me. Anyway, so yeah, here's a guy who's just going to keep getting more and more serious. Building his rig. Look, he's got a little uh, thing holding his shifter, trying to build himself an interior. Looks like he's already got the seat of the car. Um, he's put his pedals, the pedals from the, I'm assuming those pedals, and maybe his BRZ. Um, it's always fun to chase a certain cars. Look, he's got the dash. See the dash there? ba 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 la la da 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 Circus, circus. And then that takes me to iRacing. And the only thing I have to say about this, tonight, tonight I will be racing. <coughs> excuse me. Tonight I'll be racing in the Simpit Oval League. I am really crossing my fingers and hoping for a better race from the group than last week. Um, I need to talk to the group about last week, actually. It was so upsetting what went on in our open season opener. But tonight we'll be back for race number two, hoping for good, better things. Uh, on Sunday, we are going to have the Simpit Road Series race. I'll be live at 10 a.m. for that. Be live tonight at 5 p.m., all these Pacific Coast Standard Times for the Oval Race. And then tomorrow at 10 a.m., I'll be in the broadcast booth calling the action for the Simpit Patron Appreciation Race. We are going to be in uh, the Radicals at Long Beach. We did a practice race last week, and it was tough. It is a Really fun combination. The Radical at Long Beach is very fun. If you haven't tried it, I highly recommend it. But at the same time, it is a challenge. Tomorrow I'm in the booth. We are going to call the action. Winner gets the trophy. The trophy's printing right now. I'll have it tomorrow ready for the show. Um, and then that takes me to 
the Sim Pit Pit Pass. So here is the Pit Pass, and I'm going to have a link to the description. Notice we didn't give you the results from all the racing. We're not going to put that in the Pit Stop anymore. That's now going to be the Weekly Pit Pass by Devin Booth, giving you all of the results of all the Sim Pit Community Racing. We could be talking Tuesday Night Thunder. We could be talking about Mustang League, Rally League. We could be talking about the Oval or Road Series results are going to be in the Pit Pass. Also, the Pit Pass is going to have links to all the individual races that were streamed during that week. So if you want to see the stream from my ARCA race, you'll be able to find it through the links in the Pit Pass. And all those videos will be at the uh, Pit Crew channel, Sim Pit, Pit Crew channel on YouTube. So that is going to do it for today's show. Just getting things going for 2020. We got a lot of great racing going on. It seems like almost every day we have another racing event going on. Having so much fun hanging out with our community. If you type in exclamation mark Discord, you can get a link to our Discord channel. Find out about all the Simpit community racing. Hang out with me and the rest of the team. But that's going to do it for this one. Get out there and do some sim racing. This is the Simpit. I'm Sean Cole, and I'll see you on the track.